Hello there again, and welcome back to, welcome to Lithuania, uh, second of God knows how many videos in this particular series. Uh, the usual thing of me playing a bit of football manager, talking about a bit of Lithuania, hopefully learning bits and pieces as we go along. Today uh, we have our second league game where we play Nevesis uh, away. And we'll talk about Nevesis and their home town. But we're going to start off by a little bit about uh, Kaunas, which is where the uh, Hegelman play. And I suppose you could say where they come from. Right, well, the first thing to note is that Kaunas has been with us quite a long time. It's been around since uh, it was first mentioned, I think, in the... Oh, let me check my thing. I have no internet at the moment, so it's really exciting using the old phone, going back and forth and forth and back, and it makes everything a bit chaotic. Uh, dates back to something like the 10th century. Um, it's a said to be probably named for a person's name, Kunas or something like that. Uh, that's where they reckon it comes from. According to the folk history, I th find this particularly interesting. They reckon that the Romans uh, founded the town back in their era. Supposedly a patrician named Palaemon, and he had three sons, uh, Barcus, Cunus, and Sperus. He fled from Nero, and that brought, brought him up to uh, Lithuania, which in fairness is a pretty good distance to travel away to avoid Nero, given the uh, geography of the Roman Empire at that point. Uh, after his death, the sons were uh, the land was divided among the sons, and Conus got the land where Conus stands, and he built a fortress there, and that was the foundation of the city. It's built on the confluence of the uh, Nemunas and Neris rivers, so it is pretty uh, pretty good a place. There have been sort of uh, evidence found dating back is it two millennia, uh, archaeological excavations uh, from the first and second millennia. BC, so we're going a way, way back. Uh, it's um, a perfect place. It's the two longest rivers in Lithuania. Uh, and it's no surprise that for a long time, well, for, for a while, it was a capital. Uh, back when the Grand Duchy was sta uh, founded, it was one of the major cities of, uh, of the country. Uh, ah, here we go. Here's the thing I was looking for. Uh, according to 10th century um, evidence, there was definitely a settlement there, however, whatever it was. Uh, it's first, uh, first mentioned uh, that the castle is built in 1361 and then was captured after a siege and destroyed by the Teutons. The Teutons are generally the people who considered themselves the founders of what we understand now of Lithuania. But that's another discussion. Uh, granted Magdeburg rights by Vitautus the Great, who was one of the early leaders. We'll probably touch on him at a later point. Um, <clears throat> and it's uh, it was basically a fairly significant city for a long time. It uh, under the union with Poland, uh, the Grand Duchy. It was second or third biggest city in the Lithuanian side of it, at least. Uh, did pretty well with itself. Uh, in the sixth, 17th and 18th centuries, it was uh, attacked by variously the Russians and the Swedes. Uh, the Black Death was a bit of a problem around that period, and there were fires around then as well. After the... Uh, after the partition of uh, Poland and Lithuania, it was first taken over by the Russians, then taken over by the Poles. Um, in the interwar period, I know we're jumping a lot, uh, between 1919 at least anyway and 1939, it was the capital of Lithuania and remained so. And this was a great time for it. Big industrial boom, big cultural boom. This was a good time to be in certain places, not all places. Uh, during the cultural boom, anyway, it, uh, it really exploded. It was really successful. Great architecture at the time. It became the Paris of Lithuania, or 
you know, like the way that Par- uh, Paris is always the touchstone for every country, uh, every major city everywhere. Uh, the Poles took Vilnius after the war, after the First World War. After, I suppose, by the end of October in 1939, Russia had taken Vilnius over and they gave it back to Lithuania, which was very nice of them, especially seeing as by June of 1940, they took all of Lithuania over. And then about a year later, I think it was June 41, the Nazis took over Lithuania. And then presumably about 1944, the Soviet Union took over again. So it went back and forth and back and forth, right up onto, um, and obviously with uh, Vilnius there, Kaunas was not quite as significant uh, in terms of the ruling of the place. Uh, ultimately, it ends in forty-five, and it's Soviet up until nineteen the nineteen nineties, um, when uh, the whole country is released from Soviet uh, possession, oppression, whichever way you want to say it. The Soviet period was not good for anybody other than the Russians in terms of the general consideration of the place so Konus didn't do well in that period it had been people in Konus had been earning the same doing as well as their counterparts in say France or Germany they were earning a decent wage they were they had a high standard of living and obviously that went away very quickly in the 19 late 30s and the uh, and the 40s onwards a shame But that is, unfortunately, what often happens. In the modern terms, uh, it's a beautiful city. It's a popular city. It's the second biggest city in the country. Variously, figures uh, go from about 295,000 up to about 480,000, depending on how you count the size of it. Functionally, let's say it's the best part of a half a million people. And for a half a million people... There's, as you can imagine, quite a lot of sport. Uh, there have been quite a number of football clubs, but really what they're famous for is basketball, and particularly Jalgris, who are one of the big basketball teams for decades, really, at this point. Uh, they're one of the big football teams. They're the current holders of the cup, and we'll get to that in a moment. Jalgris, basically a basketball team, Biggest uh, basketball arena in the Balkans is the Jalgris Arena in Kaunas. And football, it, like a lot of clubs, it has multiple divisions. Hegelman has multiple divisions. Let's have a look at where we are on this since last I saw you. I've only played the one game. And it was a triumph in the cup. Put on a few uh, breakthrough type players. Kasbaris, uh, for example, he wouldn't be a starter. Zalekis shouldn't be a starter. Oh, sorry, uh, well, he shouldn't be after the performance he put in. He gave a goal away practically at the end. Uh, Rutkowskas is a breakthrough player. He played fairly well. Lekatsinkas, uh, not so well playing. Um, however... Uh, we got the we got the win. A couple of players played well. Alarmingly, Ma, uh, Maciek Zinskas is injured, but only for one to two weeks. So we will see how that goes. Samsonic was supersonic, as I kind of expected. On the back of that, we had the cup draw, and we got a home tie, as you can see here, against Jalgiris. Um, perhaps it's Jalgiris. I don't know. Either way, I'm a little bit scared. But that should be a good turnout. You can see for a friendly, we got 145 people, which is better than either of our other two home games to start. So I'm a little bit optimistic. We have quite a few games between then and now. One every weekend. And then a weekend cup game. And I think if we win that, we're into the last 16, because that's 32 uh, 32 teams. So we're getting there. We've achieved what we our, our minimum is for the cup. So that's good. 
Uh, let's have a look at the team. Yeah, you can see this is um, their favourites. I, I somehow suspect the home team is always the favourite in this league because it's kind of a new league. Uh, last game was rainy and wet and miserable. We've got light snow ahead for this game, minus six, even though it's in the middle of the day. And the following weekend, uh, when we're at home to Atmosfera, we have it's scheduled to be kind of meh. Uh, my expectations are next home, the next game I'm going to show is probably going to be the game against Scioli, as you can see there. So I'll have a couple of games gone. Uh, squad wise, oh yeah, we did a thing in the middle of the game, I changed the um formation up because of the injury to Machasinskas and uh, yeah I kind of like this so we might could be, we're going to be going it for this in the next game uh, it's partly trying to figure out how to keep all the players that I like in so Olen Chavicius is a better midfielder but he'll do a job there We've actually got five players who can play central midfield. So we're squeezing us. Um, yeah. So I'll leave you a look at the squad a moment. You can see two breakthroughs. Or sorry, one breakthrough starting. A breakthrough and fringe on the on the other thing. Matcha uh, Zinskas is the only regular who's not in the squad I'll be interested to see how Zalitskis uh, takes being left on the bench he's only played one game he made a mess up entirely of uh, what he should have done Rudkowskis he did well I was pleased with him gonna leave him play Let's see how that goes hopefully he doesn't come back to bite me on the rear end and uh, Nines Nine, I'm not too sure how to pronounce it. Another regular on the bench. We'll see how he goes. All right, give me a moment, and I'll come back with the other side of things as we talk about. Where are they? Where are they? These boys. And we're back. And this time we're back to K. Daini, uh, where. Uh, Nevejis comes from. Now, Kedaini is reputed to be one of the oldest cities in the country, if you can call it city. It's a population of about 24 to 25,000. Uh, the old town dates to the 17th century, but early mentions of it uh, date back to the Livonian Chronicles. We're looking at the Teutons again from 1372. Uh, it's actually pretty small, and this kind of counts as a derby because it is also in Conus County. Uh, I think the airport may be built in the city, near to the city. I'm not certain. Uh, this place got it hard from the Swedes when that war was going on in the 1660s. Um, so that wasn't great news for it. Bizarrely, in the in the 16th and 17th century, a ton of Scottish Protestants came over because of the conversion of uh, Anna Radzivill. Anna Radzivill. And so they came over and they were actually kind of important there for quite a while. Uh, when the Nazis came to take over the rest of the world on the east, uh, they spent the army, the German army stayed there the summer of 41 and eradicated any trace of the largest Jewish population that was there, which is, you know, par for the course with the Nazis. Lithuania does not have a great history uh, during the 30s and 40s, well, the 40s, for the treatment of Jewish people, I'm very sorry to say. After, after World War II, the Soviets were there, and they basically made it a, uh, an air base, a major uh, airlift facility, the city became stagnant under Soviet rule. Shock, horror. And um, it's come back now, but not before it was, let me see, 
chemical plant emitted sufficient significant quantities of sulfuric acid and the subject of ecological protests in the 1980s. We didn't hear anything about the Soviet ecological uh, protests during the 1980s, but we've certainly seen the effects of Soviet industrial style industrialization. Anyway, today, bizarrely, it's the cucumber capital. And the big team there is, of course, Nevesis, which is named for the river, the Nevesis. And uh, unfortunately, it is the basketball team that is mentioned, not the uh, football team. The basketball team dates to 1992, and the football team makes no appearance in Wikipedia despite being 30 years older. Boo! It has one particularly famous uh, person born there, Czechla Milos, who won the Nobel Prize, Polish author. I think he won it in 1980, Nobel Prize for Literature. Uh, some of his poems are quite beautiful. Um, but yeah, he's always considered a Polish author rather than a Lithuanian one. Um, I don't know whether the Lithuanians are okay with this or not. I couldn't honestly tell you. Anyway, an intriguing thing I find is that uh, looking at the the Wikipedia page, and I should put it up now, remind me if I didn't, uh, is they were a successful team back in uh, between 66 and about 79. They won a few different things. They, got, uh, they were Lithuanian champion three times. Tiny town to have a Lithuanian champion. Twice runner-up, one in 66, Third and 67, runner up in 68 and 69, third and 70, uh, one in 72 and 73, and then third and 79. So they were pretty successful there in terms of the Lithuanian Championship, which, let's face it, would have been nothing much compared to the Soviet top league. We're not talking about European qualification for this. Since the Lithuanian uh, League started, I can't tell you about the early years, but the last time they were in the uh, Liga A, that was 2002, and they finished ninth and were relegated. And then they were almost relegated again when they finished 13th in 2003 in the Pirma Liga. Oh, sorry, they were back again in 2005 and six, finished 10th both times, and then were relegated. The intriguing thing is when I look at their squad, they have a couple of Italians, a Mexican, a Honduran, two Japanese folks. Uh, it looks like a Venezuelan and a Uruguayan. They have no forwards who are from Lithuania. Let's kick on to the game. So their favourites, all home teams seem to be favourites. Form is too early to tell. As you can see, 4-2-3-1. Seems to be that might be typical. Let's kick on. As you probably have guessed by now, let's see, do we have everybody? Yeah, Druzas is still out. Machazinkas. Machazinskas. I will get there eventually. Sorry, friends from Lithuania. I'm trying. Not succeeding yet, but I'm trying. Um... Machazinskas not in uh, in the not eligible yet to start. We'll see. It alarms me that I have a player set to be in that position. And it says there are major issues there. I'm not too worried with major issues there, but why are there ma minor issues and major issues where there is literally a player playing? We'll consider that at a later point. Onto the game. Yes, he is. We'll not worry about that. And now we wait. So I'll see you when it gets to kickoff time. Hey, folks, here we are on an icy field. Hopefully, we'll see a bit of football that works for us. I'm glad they've got the blue, the yellow ball and the blue lines because otherwise I wouldn't be able to tell a thing. It's hard to say how much the cold and snow affects this game. I'm always impressed with how much the different bits and pieces do ultimately pay a part of it. 
Ooh, decent effort. First time starting again with this lineup, or this um, not lineup formation. So I'm uh, interested to see what'll ha happen. Uh. Oof, just as well. Very hard to see, I find. I can't speak for you. That's some run, hey? And um, yep, yeah, wasted immediately, as you would expect. Great run, only to go out the, down the toilet. I'm intrigued that they've named an injured player on their squad. Let's see if we can do something out of this. Oh, that should have done better there. Ball right in at the back. Would like to have seen that finish a little bit better. So reasonably balanced in our attacks. They've had more shots than us, interestingly. But we're fouling them more, so that's good. We've dropped down to 8th by this point. We had been in 6th in the morning. Somebody must have had uh, scored goals who were below us, as far as I can tell. Oh. Oh, that's foolish. That's not going to end well for us. Oh, he's, oh, thank God, I thought he was gone. Yeah, I think the sound effects are bunched so far. Hopefully they'll get fixed with the next update. Uh, I'll continue to talk about the sound updates and not about the lousy penalty we conceded or the half-hearted effort. Ugh. And now we're 11th. The crowd's going wild. Oh, ah, where did that go? Maybe I'm just an old man and I can't see it, but that looked... I just lost all track of the ball at a certain point. Well, I feel a little hard done by, but they have the bulk of possession. And... Uh, another corner. It is an away game. My job is to be competitive. Don't... Oh. That wasn't what was meant to happen. That's... Not good for the morale. What happens here? Kicks it in. Nice volley. Completely unmarked. I think I'd better shout at them. I'll demand more and see how that goes. Badly, I would expect. Nope. No impact whatsoever. So we're getting as many shots, but we're not getting any on target. Let's see what happens when I do this. So yeah, this isn't like Inter Turku, who are kind of expected to finish in the top half. We're kind of expected to get relegated. Hmm. We have the extra man on the right, but all our attacks are coming down the left. What does this say? Says we're nearly at half time. Oh, they're frustrated. Zalgris beer are really bombing along there. I can't but expect Zalgris B to Zalgiris B to uh, top the league at the uh, end of the season. To be honest, anything going to happen? Corner kick for them? Presumably nothing. Hardly conceded any free kicks in. Promising areas. We're doing better than them, it looks like. We've had more ball. Good number of touches, one back position. Hmm. Let's see how we're actually playing. 6-4, six, 6-4, four, six, four, poor from the full backs. Poor from central mid. Poor from everybody. We're balanced. Yay! They've scored two goals and they've got like 
Mm. One player who looks to be playing not badly. Interesting stuff, boys and girls. So, uh, hi Eric. I've been intrigued to see how I do on crosses and throws. This has been a thing I've noticed. Eric's having a ton of throw-ins and a ton of crosses with his teams at the moment. Not as many here this week, but I have seen my crosses getting up to like 40 attempts. So that's intriguing. We're running marginally more than them, but we're not that far behind them in terms of gameplay. So... Let's see what that becomes. Uh, is it worth changing anybody out at this point? Not really. I will give them the proverbial bollocking, though, I think. Uh, anything I want to do here? No. Can make them tighter. A bit of counter pressing. Actually, now we'll leave on the overlapping. Hit earlier crosses. Slightly more direct. Wider. Let's put it back on positive. Tell these guys to wake up. Mostly impressed. Except Slamdikov. And he's uh, Belarusian, so I can't ex expect anything different. Yeah, now he's on, on, the, on the team bus as well. Ready to walk through walls. So I like to think... That one of the reasons that my squad morale is picking up so quickly is I'm taking the time to praise and or criticize every performance in training. And it takes like two, three minutes every time because you're going down through the whole squad mostly. But I've noticed that in the last week or two, there's been, I think two weeks ago, it was literally three people who performed less than a seven and this week nobody performed less than a seven which is great for training i mean it probably helps that we're outside of the uh horrible pre-season thing now okay we gotta change people we gotta do something oh they're all upset now the time to make subs Uh, where to start? Well, he's playing awful. Let's bring on Stulga. That work? Can he play that position? Kind of. Who else needs to come off? Oh, some Sonic. No, no, no. Maybe I take off Slam Dick off. And bring him on. Go to a much more traditional lineup. And make it an attacking one. At this point, I suspect we are really just looking at um, yeah, damage control rather than pushing on to try and win. We'll see. Be nice if we could pull back a draw. 2-2 two, two draw in our first game. 2-1 in our second, losing 2-0, so... Oh! That's 2-1. And the crowd goes silent. And you can see an actual crowd there for a change. That's nice. 
That's a cracking goal. Stradilovas did great work on the wing and... Cracking goal. That's opened up a whole world of possibility. Oh, I should have said concentrate. Oh, I should have said concentrate. It's too late to say concentrate. That's a stupid one to give up. How soon after? Very soon after. Das goes. Oh. Is that because it was questionable? I don't know. Very poor defending on that. Pass it, yeah. Let's see if we can get in another good cross. I think this is a team that will be an attacking team. We're going to get destroyed by Jalgiris's top team. Ooh. That was somewhat close. Let's see. 70 minutes. Well, well done, Daskus. Well done. That's actually a decent pass. And that's a simple tackle. Oh no, four. No. Well, we scored in this one. That's something at least. They're still concentrating. Good. With the goal score. Baralkis. Oh. Well, he scored these before. Oh, not on this occasion. He scored one like that in the uh, cup game, which was the difference. Let's see. What should we do subs wise? Baranowskis is not playing well. Samsonic is getting worse as the game goes on. What do one do? Let's have a look and see what's possible here. I could take Samsonic's place. No one could really take Samsonic's place. And not the good way. How about we do this? Foolishness. Is there anyone who can take him there? Not really. Is there anyone who could fit in there? Okay, let's try this silliness. There we go. Super attacking. Well, you know, super attacking. Attacking. That's not going to be super. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to work. In the sense that it's a chance to give players a chance to play. Automatic. Give the team talk to the player. Pressure's off. Good. He's young. I think he's something silly like... Is he 17 or something like that? 18. That's young 18, is it? No, old 18. Old 18. Eh, Middle-aged 18. Does it really matter? Probably not. Let me get over here. Sorry, I'm watching. My head looking funnier than usual. That's just gone mad. Oh, 
Oh, great. That's timing. Oh, here we go. But they're not they're not in very attacking mode yet, but can they uh Oh. Oh, that would have been something else. Let's shout something positive at them. Demand more. See if that means anything to them. Yep, that helps them. So we'll see. No, too late. Too little, too late. It's 3-1. I can live with 3-1. Not ideal. I don't want to be losing games, but... We are literal nobodies. That's a strange place for fullbacks to be waiting. And, uh, gee, we're tackling ourselves an awful lot here. That's what I see. So, good few first times. 75th league appearance for by Barakis. And his first ever, his first career league goal. Yeah, a few players playing their first games. Um, very quickly, I'm just going to skip forward. Tell you that I will see you again in time for the game with Shirley. Which is the beginning of April. Gives me three games to try and... Sorry, two games to try and get my act together. Hopefully, we will have done by then. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, the usual things. I'll see you soon. Bye.